Hi everyone, Axel Wilkinson here to share another hit film tutorial, this time covering motion blur. Motion blur, as the name implies, is blur created by an object's movement while being filmed. To explain simply, motion blur records the distance across the frame which an object travels while the shutter of the camera is open. If we look at this shot of a tennis ball being thrown, I'll zoom in using the scroll wheel, and you can see some blur on the ball there. If we look at this still image of the same tennis ball for reference, when we look at the video you can see that during the time it took to capture this frame, the ball moved from here to here. So as a result it blurs across that distance that the ball traveled while the shutter was open. Let's zoom back out and watch our reference clip so we can see the ball in motion. Now I'm going to replicate that movement by animating this still image of the tennis ball. And to do that, I'm just going to parent it to a point which I've already set up to rotate. And so once this is parented to it, the ball will arc across the screen. And now if we play this clip back, it's not too hard to see which of these two tennis balls was added in after the fact. The one we've just animated looks very much like it was pasted on, and it's not a very convincing composite. But if we take this layer with our still image of the tennis ball, and we open its layer properties in the controls panel, there's an option for motion blur. And if we turn that on, let me zoom in again so you can see it more clearly. If we turn that on, suddenly the ball blurs and looks much more like the ball in the actual footage that we're working with. So now, if I zoom back out and we step back, deselect and play that, now it's much more difficult to tell which of those balls was added in post because the blur on our fake tennis ball matches the real one pretty darn well. So anytime you're animating the position of layers in your project, adding motion blur to the moving layers can greatly enhance the results and make them more realistic. Keep in mind though that motion blur is also going to increase the amount of time it takes to render the scene. And so by default, motion blur is turned off for any new layers you create. But anytime you want to activate motion blur for a layer, it's as simple as opening the layer properties and toggling on this checkbox. There are a few other controls for motion blur as well, which you can edit if you need to. They are found in the properties for the composite shot. So if we click to open the properties and then select the advanced tab, we will find the motion blur controls. The first control is a toggle to enable motion blur for the composite shot, which is on by default. Next we have the shutter angle, which basically controls the amount of blur that's applied to the layer. By default this is set to 180, but if we change that, let's change it to 360, then notice how the blur is expanded on the viewer there when I click OK. Now if we open those settings again and change it to a smaller number, zero will create no blur at all. But if we go to perhaps 90, which was half of the original setting, and click OK. Now we have a little bit of blur, but not a whole lot. Now in most cases, the default setting of 180 degrees is what most cameras are going to actually use for their shutter angle, and so this is going to give the most realistic results in most cases. You can see at 180, the amount of blur is pretty darn close to what was actually captured by my camera when I threw the real tennis ball. All right, the third control is shutter phase which is by default set to minus 90, and this controls the position of the blur in relation to the actual layer. Let me cancel out of here for a second and select the layer, and you can see right now the position of our layer is right on the front of the blurred area. The ball was traveling this way, and so all of the blur is behind the actual position of the layer. Now, if we change the shutter phase, let's change it to We'll get rid of the minus, change it to a positive 90, and now the blur is all in front of the layer's position. If we set that to zero, guess what's going to happen? You probably guessed correctly, the blur is centered on the position, so now there's a bit of blur behind and a bit of blur in front of the actual position. So using the shutter phase, you can control where the blur falls in relation to the actual layer. In most cases, a shutter phase of negative half the value of the shutter angle is going to give the most realistic results. So in this case, with a shutter angle of 180, we'll want to use a shutter phase of minus 90, which is the default setting. 
There is one more place that you can turn motion blur on and off, and that's in the render menu for the viewer. Here there's an option for motion blur which just has a check. You can toggle that check to turn the motion blur off and then back on just by selecting it. And this is actually very useful for optimizing performance. Maybe you have a complex project set up with a whole bunch of layers and some of them have motion blur and you need to adjust things. Well you can very quickly disable motion blur from this menu to speed things up while making the adjustments and then turn it back on when you want to see a preview of what the final render will look like. Once motion blur is enabled, it's an automatic process. Any layer that has animation keyframed into its transform properties will automatically receive the right amount of blur based on how far it moves in each frame. If you need to adjust the amount of blur, then you can either increase the speed of the object, which will affect the distance it travels in each frame, or you can increase the shutter angle in the properties of the composite shot. But increasing the shutter angle, because it's part of the composite shot properties, will affect every layer within the composite. Motion blur will not affect movement within a video frame. So let's hide our still image layer here for a second and look at our video. And if I apply motion blur to this video layer, it's not going to affect the blur that we see on this tennis ball. In fact, if I open layer properties and turn that on, nothing changes because the layer itself is stationary. And so the contents of a layer are never going to be affected by adjusting the motion blur. Only if you animate the position of the layer in the transform controls will motion blur have any effect. But suppose you do want to simulate the effects of motion blur within the contents of a frame of video. Well that is possible to some extent in HitFilm but you have to use a different technique. So let's look at how to do that really quick. I'm going to select this video of a guy playing a bass guitar. I'm going to make it a composite shot. First I'm going to mute the layer and now if I play this back you can see this shot itself is locked off, the background is fixed and all the movement is in the musician and the bass guitar. So if we want to add some blur just in the areas with movement we can open the temporal menu and apply a motion trails effect. And if we play this back you can see that now the movement in the frame is blurred while the rest of the frame remains sharp. In the controls panel you can adjust the appearance of the motion trails to some extent, but this is basically just a way to simulate motion blur within the contents of a video layer. But it is a different process than the genuine motion blur that HitFilm can create based on the movement of a layer. Well this brings our look at motion blur to an end. Thanks very much for watching. And as you apply the techniques found in this tutorial or in any of our other tutorials, please share the results with us because we'd love to see what you're all creating using the HitFilm software. And until next time, farewell.